Yeah, let's get some credit. Good afternoon. For this one. The Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018 meeting of the Thousand Oaks Council on Aging will now come to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And may we have the roll call now, please. Please say here present when I call your name. Chair Gorbach? Here. Vice Chair Allen? Here. Commissioner Burt? Here. Commissioner Fotheringham? Here. Commissioner Gitt? Present. Commissioner Hege? Here. Commissioner Maria? Here. Commissioner Mortimer is here. absent. I mean, Commissioner here. Mortimer <laughs> is here. <laughs> Commissioner here. Posa is absent. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Number four on our agenda is public comments, and I do not have a public comment card today. Oh. Okay, I, one is being run up to the podium, to the dais right now. Thank you very much. We do have a public comment, and this is from Courtney Darrow, and uh, would you please join us at the podium? Good afternoon. Is this the right place? It is. I just wanted to come and let you know that um, we have a program, Caregivers Volunteers Assisting the Elderly. We're a nonprofit based on a one on one kind of friendship between a senior and a volunteer who would help them out once a week in their home for a few hours. We're now in the Thousand Oaks area. We still have the one office in Ventura, but we've branched out to help seniors in Thousand Oaks. And it's a new thing. It's been just about six months to a year that we've been reaching out to this community and also Simi Valley and some other areas in the Conejo Valley. So we just wanted to let you know we're here. And if you know any seniors who are 60 or older that could use a little bit of help, kind of a friendship, neighborly, tasky kind of help, um, they would be a great candidate for the program if they're interested. I have some brochures. Anyone can call and ask questions or put in a formal request for assistance at any time. We also work with a lot of other programs, over 140 local community programs, um, partner programs, we consider them. And we're having an open house May 22nd, Tuesday, from 1 to 4 in the afternoon. If any of you would like to attend or if you know anybody who might be interested in coming, uh, we'll have a lot of things going on that day, so it'll be a great time. Thank you so much for letting me speak today. I also have brochures. I think I already said that, but if anyone wants any more information, let me know. And thank you very much. Number five on our agenda are the agency reports, and I'd like to call on Julie Spivak to talk about the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program. Thank you. I just wanted to talk about a few opportunities that we have at the moment. Our, um, the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program has a senior nutrition program that runs Monday through Friday from 1130 to 1230 at the Global Adult Community Center. This is a grant-funded program through Ventura County Area Agency on Aging. We feed about 60 people a day. We're always looking for volunteers to help in the kitchen and in the dining room and for our breakfast program. We have about 25 volunteers running this program that are um, checking in at the registration desk that help bring the seniors their trays, help them refill their water, and help our chef prepare the meals, serve the meals, and help with the dishes. It's a really, really fun program. We also, um, another one of our partner agencies is America Supporting Americans. And we just have, um, they've decided to put a donation box in the global lobby. So if anyone, <clears throat> there's a whole list in our volunteer voice, which is the, um, our newsletter for the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program. And we have a whole list of things that they are looking for. The uh, America Supporting Americans sends cards, letters, and care packages to our troops overseas. So if you have anything, bring it into the global center. We also just finished our tax season, and um, it, it went really successful. We have about 45 volunteers that run that program, 
and our tax counseling has just started. So if you need help with your income taxes, um, then give us a call. The program runs May through October and it's the first Wednesday of the month. You can make um, a reservation at the um, the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program office. So if you have any questions about any of this, give us a call at 805-381-2742. Thank you. I have a question, Julie. If um, someone wanted to take a look at the Volunteer Voice, how, how could they do that? So our newsletter goes out to all of our volunteers. So we send this out to about 900 people. And um, it's if you are signed up with us as a volunteer and in our system, this is a quarterly newsletter. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 5B, I'd like to call on Patty Ham, please, who is going to speak about the Global Adult Community Center. Get on. Good afternoon. Uh, May is a super busy month at Global. Uh, we have our Cinco de Mayo event coming up this Friday, El Cuatro de Mayo instead of Cinco de Mayo. Um, but unfortunately, it is sold out, but those that do have tickets are going to have a fantastical time. Um, and I just wanted to let you know about that. Uh, Mother's Day Tea Party on uh, May 12th, the Saturday before Mother's Day. That event is unfortunately also sold out, but we are celebrating mothers and grandmothers and great-great-grandmothers uh, that day and their, um, their family. Um, this Saturday on Cinco de Mayo, we will be having a ballroom dance. And that ballroom dance uh, is on the first and third of the month, every month, and it's live bands. And it's eight dollars uh, to attend. And dance lessons this Saturday, of course, for Cinco de Mayo is the salsa. So that's from 6:30 to 7:20, and then the dance begins at 7:30 and goes until 10. Uh, the live band this Saturday is Eric Extran Trio. Um, on May 18th. Annette Brosma is going to come, and she's going to facilitate a seminar titled Showbiz After 60. And on May 18th from 2.30 to 4, she'll be there for seniors to find out how they can get extra work and everything about it, how much extras get paid and if you need an agent and um, what your responsibility is. And, and uh, if you're interested in showbiz, any seniors out there, uh, come on to Gobel and, and find out more about that. I have, you know, I have my wishes one day I'll be Somebody will notice me and tell me that I can be a star, but maybe I'll go to that that uh, and get get noticed. Um, in May is National Senior Health and Fitness Day, and that day is Wednesday, May 30th, and we are celebrating National Senior Health and Fitness Day in the pool this year. We're going to be at CLU Community Pool from 10 to... Um, 11 and seniors can sign up for that event at Global Center by calling 381-2744 uh, or coming to the front desk and signing up and there'll be fabulous 50s and 60s music we'll be doing the YMCA and the Macarena in the pool hopefully it'll be a nice hot day and if it's not it'll be warm in the pool and then afterwards we will have a barbecue healthy lunch uh, to celebrate this day and uh, we do have a renowned famous and excellent instructor coming in and providing uh, the class that day Mwah. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this or not but I do teach the during the summer we offer for 10 weeks free for seniors 50 plus Monday Wednesdays are at Thousand Oaks um, High School and traditionally Tuesday Thursdays are at Newbury Park High School pool from 12 to 1 free water exercise classes um, this year though the Newbury Park pool is under construction and they are gonna go a little bit over so we're gonna be at T.O. High School pool Monday through Thursday for the first couple of weeks in summer and then when it's open we'll go back over to uh, Newbury Park High School on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I invite all of you to come join us. Put on your swimsuits, sun hat, sunscreen, come have some fun. That's it. Thank you. Patty, may I ask you, are those, is the pool heated? It is. Yes. Great. And on a really, on really, really, really hot days, it's so refreshing. Even though it's heated, it's really refreshing. 
great. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for your report, Patty. Okay, number six on our agenda, commissioner reports, and I'd like to call on Vice Chair Allen to facilitate that part of our program, please. Thank you. Uh, first, our first report, 6A, is caregiving, and that'll be Commissioner Forthingham. Hi, good afternoon. I'd like to uh, wrap up the series that I've been offering uh, this year on family caregiving by talking about what happens when things get a little out of control, you get in over your depth and so forth as a, a family caregiver, and this can happen either because you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, or you don't have the right skill set to, to take care of your loved one, um, and you need help from elsewhere. The simplest form, and the one that I think is probably desired by most people, is to bring somebody into your home to, to be the caregiver, and this can range anywhere from somebody who comes in once in a while to maybe prepare a meal or do some uh, cleaning, or you uh, all the way from needing somebody there 24-7. Uh, unfortunately, this is also often the most expensive uh, route to go, uh, largely because the people that are coming into your home are sort of dedicated to your loved one, and they're not, uh, they're not a shared resource with somebody else. So if you go to uh, another facility, like an assisted living facility or a skilled nursing facility, uh, then you end up getting uh, skilled personnel and so forth that are shared with other residents, and, and, uh, and that cuts the cost a little bit. Um, one of the things that I, if, if you're uh, at the point where your loved one and so forth needs um, a little help with some activities of daily living, for example, if maybe you feel it's not safe for them to light the stove to prepare their own meals, even though they might remember how to cook and so forth, that uh, they may have uh, enough dementia and so forth that this is a safety problem and so forth, and you'd rather they got meals uh, prepared by somebody else and so forth, uh, all the way from, you know, bathing. Uh, if they need help with bathing, they need help managing their medication and so forth, then this is something that uh, uh, either somebody coming in from the outside or an assisted living facility might be the appropriate choice. Um, you can find out more about what's available in our community uh, by going to Senior Concerns, and that may be a good place to, to start in your search for a, a resource of that type. If you need something a little more than that, uh, you need um, anything ranging from assisted living to uh, a skilled nursing facility, there's another resource available in our county that I would like to highly recommend to you, and that's the Ombudsman Program. Uh, and this is a program that's federally mandated. It's, uh, it's uh, run by the state, uh, or at least certified by the state, and uh, implemented in our county by a nonprofit uh, the uh, Long-Term Care Services of Ventura County. There are a couple of us sitting before you now who are in that, uh, our ombudsman in that program. Um, and um, they can, uh, because they do um, uh, visit these facilities on a regular basis, uh, one from once to several times a month and so forth, they're pretty familiar with uh, which ones are the uh, the best, the most appropriate, and so forth in your particular case, and can offer you uh, free and expert guidance and so forth. So if you think you might uh, need to place your loved one in a facility like this and so forth, I recommend that you call them, and uh, I'll give you the number now. It's area code 805-656-1986. That's 805-656-1986. Uh, and that's, uh, along with Senior Concerns, is a great spot to start in your search for the appropriate facility, facility for your loved one. So thank you very much. Thank you. Our next item is 6B, and that's Social Service, and that's Commissioner Maria. Thank you, Vice Chair Allen. Um, we didn't rehearse this, but I am going to be talking about an organization here in Thousand Oaks that's just fabulous, and it, and it keys off nicely of what you talked about, Nick, and that's Senior Concerns. Um, it seems like senior concerns comes up a lot in our, in our meetings, but I've never actually formally presented it. So I did want to call it out and give you a little bit of information about it. Um, senior concerns is a nonprofit provider of services, and their focus or their mission is really to foster independence, uh, well-being, and self-esteem for our seniors. Their goal is to keep seniors in their homes as long as possible, safe and um, 
and innovative and effective programs are available to help do this. So what services are provided by Senior Concerns? Um, a big piece of the focus is wellness and healthy aging. There is an adult daycare or a day center. There's Meals on Wheels for people that need to have meals delivered to their home. They also have a caregiver support center for families that need information on how to go about um, finding the appropriate caregiver. They have legal, financial, and advocate services, so you can get pro, bo pro bono financial and legal advice um, from professionals. There's education and information on Medicare, Social Security, uh, really a myriad of topics. And they also have volunteer and community activities available. So maybe you don't need their services right now, but you want to volunteer. And can you volunteer? Sure. They have uh, several areas where they're always looking for people that can help out. Um, the first one is their bargain boutique and thrift store. They're always looking for people that want to um, help them organize displays, sort merchandise, deal with the customers. Um, Meals on Wheels, they need help delivering the meals. They have an annual love run and they need help aiding um, staffing and aiding the water stations and also to do setup and breakdown of the race stations. They also have an ultimate dining experience fundraiser and they do an auction. So they need help securing auction items as well as helping with auction registration and checkout. So there's a lot of opportunities, not only for things you may need, um, need yourself, but also if you wanna give back to the community and volunteer. And if you want to find Senior Concerns, they're located at 401 Hoden Camp Road in Thousand Oaks. Their website is www.seniorconcerns.org, or you can reach them by phone at 805-497-0189. And I encourage all of you to check out their website. It really is a great organization. And I think, Commissioner Allen, I also have the next topic. Yes, you do. <laughs> which is our Senior of the Six Year C. ceremony. Yes. <laughs> so I'll go into that one, too. Um, the, our Senior of the Year award ceremony is scheduled this, uh, this year, June 7th, which is a Thursday, and it'll be at the Goebel Center, the Goebel Community Center, and it starts at 5.30 p.m. And this year we have selected some fabulous nominees to recognize. We have Bob... Kachavo, Margaret Feiweiger, Nancy Healy, Sharon Lear, and Irene Seda. So if you know these people or you want to help us celebrate, I really encourage you to go to the Global Center and pick up some tickets to this event. It's really going to be fun. Um, our dinner is being provided by Cisco's Restaurant. And I want to thank our dinner sponsors. Um, our dinner sponsors are the City of Thousand Oaks and also Los Robles. Our dessert sponsor is the Reserve at Thousand Oaks. Um, Goebel Adult Community Center is sponsoring our beverages. And then we have raffle donations from the Caneo Senior Volunteer Program, Harley's Bowl, Thousand Oaks Library Foundation, and UCLA. So <coughs> again, I encourage all of you to get tickets. They're av available at the Goebel Center. They're $6 and all the proceeds will benefit Caneo Senior Volunteer Program. Great, thank you very much. And <coughs> If you haven't been to the Senior of the Year Banquet, you have got to go. That is the most wonderful event of the year, so please consider. Consider going. Whether or not you know these folks, you will just walk away with a huge smile on your face. It's a, it's a really special evening. Uh, number seven on our agenda today um, is a liaison report for the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging, and for that I would like to call upon Commissioner Hagee, who represents us on, that, um, on the Advisory Council for the VCAAA. VC AAA, what is it? The Ventura County, and what are the three A's? Area Aging, Area Agency on Aging. Say that five times real fast. Okay, I'm going to talk about four items uh, today. Who are we? Who do we serve? Our goals and our priorities. And what I'd like you to do is to get a pencil and paper. I always want to give you plenty of time, so you, I'm going to give you a phone number, as I always do, to write down. 
So while you're doing that, I'll talk to you about who are we. The Ventura County Area Aging is the principal agency that addresses issues that relate to older adults, adults with disabilities, and their caregivers. Okay, And interesting fact in the Census Bureau has put out this year is 10,000 people will turn 65 today and tomorrow and the next day all the way up to 2019. 10,000 a day will join the ranks of the elderly. Who do we serve? Well, we provide services to older adults age 60 or older, persons with disabilities, and unpaid caregivers. The goal to target services to those in need, make sure that our program participants mirror the compositions of the community we serve. And that community, according to Ventura County Public Health, is 860,013 people in that group. An estimated 38.5% of the population speak a language other than English at home. And people over the age of 65 make up about 14.48% of the population in Ventura County. The poverty rate remains around 8%. Now our goals, what are our goals? Our goals are real simple. Provide resources and services, increase an in awareness of programs and services that are available to people. And now I'd like to give you that phone number for you to call. So you got that pencil and paper ready? It's 805-477-7300. Okay? It's 805-477-300. Okay. And now, our priorities. Priorities are, there are 11 priorities. One is help older adults maintain their independence and ability to live at home. That's really important if you've talked to anybody over the age of 65. That's one of their major concerns. I want to stay at my home. I don't want to leave my home. To protect older adults living in long-term care facilities, to provide home-delivered meals, to provide health insurance information and system navigation through unbiased counseling, <coughs> provide evidence-based classes that help prevent falls, provide congregate meals, prevent abuse, and protect the rights of older adults to include case management for those who have been abused, provide transportation, to provide family caregiver with information and assistance about available resources, to provide emergency food, and to communicate to the public who we are, the services we provide, and the resources available. Now, if you have any of those areas uh, of need, then you want to call that phone number, which is 805-477-7300. Give them a call and take advantage of the services available that from our Ventura County, and all those services are free. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Hagee. Thank you very much. Let's go on now. Number eight on our agenda, Commissioner Comments. And let's start at the other end of the desk, please. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I just want to let everybody know of a reminder I got today that customers with an 805 area code must start entering the area code for all calls starting June 2nd. So some of our seniors might need a, some of us that are seniors might need a little extra reminder of that. So thank you. Is that a one and the area code or just the area code? It just, well, that depends on whether you're using a cell phone or a landline phone. 
Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone else at this end? Yes. Thank you. Um, I would like to announce that one month from today, I will be 75 years old, which of course means that TSA will no longer make me take my shoes off at the airport. <laughs> and to the best of my knowledge, that's the only benefit associated with that You're milestone. Still here. <laughs> You're still here. That's the best benefit. Okay. <laughs> Any other announcements? Yes, thank you. I'm happy to announce that I still need to keep my shoes on <laughs> at the airport um, for another few years. Uh, I would like to back up a little bit on terms of what Commissioner Fotheringham talked about with the Ombudsman program. And, and uh, to all out there who are listening, um, if you don't know much about a facility, and there are so many of them, there is a rating system, and it's a five-star system, so that's one, something that's published. The other thing is, through the ombudsman program, they had the, the volunteers, the ombudsman, they actually do visit these facilities, all of these facilities in Ventura County, whether they're skilled nursing or residential care facilities, which are better known as six-bed facilities. So if you call the office in Ventura, the number that Nick had given to you, um, they can actually refer you to that particular ombudsman who services that facility on whether it's a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And you may get some inside information about the programs and what's going on there. They're not going to recommend or deny that a facility is a good facility, but they will give you some additional information in terms of the programs that are offered and things like that. And it's a, it's a very good way to start your search. So just wanted to back up in terms of what Commissioner Fotheringham had said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Maria, anything else? Okay, let's go down this way. Yes, Commissioner Gitt. Um, I'm pleased to announce that the Caneo Valley Village is uh, celebrating its one-year anniversary, and uh, to do that, we're holding a fiesta this weekend. If you're interested uh, in either attending or coming to becoming a member of the Caneo Valley Village, you can call a call manager at 805-372-1826. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Hagee, any other comments? Okay, thank you. I have a few comments today. Um, <clears throat> this past Sunday, I represented the Council on Aging at the Conejo Valley Adult School reception for the um, team from the Western Association of Schools and Colleges who are in Thousand Oaks this week to do a site visit for the um, accreditation of the Conejo Valley Adult School. And it was a, a really nice event to go to. I was very happy to represent the Council on Aging. And um, you know, the adult school, as I'm sure you know, is a shining star among many shining stars in the Conejo Valley Unified School District. So that was delightful. <clears throat> Secondly, I would like to thank the Goebel Adult Community Center for hosting a, um, a free workshop I did last Friday called Get That Job. And it was well attended and the, um, the participants were enthusiastic and I hope they walked away with a lot of great information about where to look for jobs and interviews and um, resumes and all sorts of other, other things. And you know, the, um, the older adult workforce is definitely on the rise and there's no reason why anyone of any age shouldn't get out there and get that job. Um, let's see. I attended as a private citizen, not representing the Council on Aging, but as a private citizen, I went to the last Planning Commission meeting and spoke on behalf of a new a memory care facility that is being proposed in the Shadow Oaks area of Thousand Oaks. And we heard from our speaker in January who came to us to speak about um, dementia that unfortunately the disease of dementia and, and Alzheimer's in particular is certainly on the rise unfortunately and so um, the Planning Commission did approve the plans for the new memory care facility and the next step would be to go before the City Council and um, I, I feel this is very important and that's why I stood up to speak on their behalf. Finally, on a personal note, I am going to be signing copies of Chicken Soup for the Soul, My Amazing Mom, this Saturday at Barnes & Noble in the Promenade in Westlake Village. 
uh, they, I do have an essay in the book, and I am very happy and honored to be there. I'll be signing books, and I can personalize it for anybody you like, and I will be there from one to three. The person after me, though, is, um, let's see, he is signing his book. Who did I say? God, I don't remember his name. A guy named Elgin Baylor is going to be signing his book right after me from three to five. Now, I figure... I will bring in the crowd for him. <laughs> yes, I will. I will warm up the crowd, and um, I, I figure he'll thank me afterwards. But, you know, I'm a giving kind of person, so it's all good. So anyway, e even if you don't want the book, you know, stop on by to say hello, please, and say, hey, I saw you on television, and that would make me very happy. Okay. For number nine on our agenda, I would like to turn the program over to Commissioner Mortimer. Thank you. I was introducing Jordan LaPelle and Alan Cohen from Ventura County Crime Stoppers. Unfortunately, Alan got called away to work, and we just have Jordan here today. So Jordan LaPelle is an experienced security professional with over 25 years of experience specializing in crime prevention, security technology, security threat assessments, data security, and physical security. He frequently teaches and presents to security groups, communities, and companies around North America. He is well versed on the latest security innovations for preventing crimes and protecting places where people shouldn't be and enjoys sharing his expertise to build safe, strong communities. Both Alan and Jordan are volunteers with the Ventura County Crime Stoppers and find this a truly rewarding experience. Please welcome Jordan LaPel. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh-oh. Thank you again. Good afternoon. My presentation is going to be um, three parts. We're going to talk about Ventura County Crime Stoppers, uh, the background of Crime Stoppers and how to report a, a crime and how that program works. I'm also going to talk about the top 10 financial scams for seniors and any questions you might have on that. And then on the TO website, that is www.to aks.org forward slash seniors. Um, there'll be a home safety tip for older adults on there. So there'll be some uh, information that uh, will help you if you have any questions. So what is Crime Stoppers? Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit organization that works with law enforcement and the media to solve crimes. You might have seen it on any of the news, um, any social media. Um, it's actually world renowned, and you'll see that in a minute. We work with the public and the private to partner, a partnership to raise money for crime tip prevention and crime tip solving. The first Crime Stoppers program was born in September 8, 1976, in New Mexico. Frustrated detectives turned to the public for help. Communities needed media and law enforcement to join into a partnership and offer rewards to individuals that provided anonymous tipping. This is really something that um, I'm passionate about in my, in my professional career is we can't solve crimes without the community's help, whether it's in corporate security, private security, even law enforcement. You know, there's, there's budgets and there's um, just a selected few that are sworn that could solve crimes. So everyone in TV land or everyone out here, an extra set of eyes really helps in, in reporting. There's 350 programs in the US and territories, and we're also internationally, Canada, Caribbean, Latin America, Europe, Australia, and so Southern and Western Pacific. Crime Stoppers has really taken off as far as giving people the ability, and you'll hear this over and over, to report crimes anonymously. The premise behind everything we do is anonymous reporting. So a little bit of uh, 
we'll call it the the circle of life is how the um, community and the news and social media and law enforcement plays into um, the premise behind Crime Stoppers and how we solve crimes. So the areas that we cover in, in Ventura County is obviously all of Ventura County, um, all of uh, Simi Valley, all the way th to the border of Santa Barbara County, but we work in joint task force with um, LA Regional Crime Stoppers. I happen to be on the board as well, um, which we have a TV show and we're very um, networked into the networks from um, how to uh, report a crime or how to solve a crime. You'll see on on the, the news a lot, you know, on the bottom, you know, call 1-800 something for, for Crime Stoppers. Um, some statistics for LA and Ventura alone are um, in 2017 we took 35 million dollars worth of guns and drugs and stopped six human trafficking um, enterprises just in LA County and Ventura County alone. So law enforcement couldn't have done that without the public's help. Um, of course as I mentioned it's all providing anonymous ways of crime reporting. And this is a I'll call it a, another circle of life of how it works because you might ask yourself, you know, how is, how is it really anonymous? Um, the tips come in, um, and I'll show you a, a few ways of how the tips come in, but they come in um, through the web, through a phone, or through an app on your a mobile device. They go to a third-party server that sends those tips to um, law enforcement's uh, command centers that are manned 24 hours. And then there's a two-way dialogue with the tipster and back and forth as far as um, how, how they can follow up on their tips or if their tips actually led to an arrest. So as I mentioned, there's three ways um, to report a crime. There's the telephone number 1-800-222-TIPS or 8477. P3 is a mobile application that you could go on your Android or your, your Apple device and download. Um, a lot of folks I know have this actually downloaded because when they cross over counties and states, P3 is, is the um, platform of choice for Crime Stoppers. So you're able to report crimes even outside your area. The website is uh, www.VenturaCountyCrimestoppers.org. And all tips, as I've mentioned before, are anonymous and the operations is open 24-7. Here's another example of the app. So I would encourage everyone to download it. You can play with it. <laughs> um, it could be on your phone and never be used. But um, if you see a crime or you feel you're a victim of a crime, this is a way to, again, report those anonymously. Um, this is very important. I'm going to overemphasize this. We do pay financial rewards up to $1,000 based on the nature of the crime. Um, when you're using the telephone, web-based, or the application, it's very important that you, the only way you're identified is through a specific code number. And that code can never be recovered. So if you don't write it down or you write it down wrong or you lose it, there's no way to recover it because it's all anonymous. So having a code helps you in a couple of ways. It helps you follow up on... Um, if there was an arrest made or or helps you follow up if you want to seek the financial reward that comes with that. Um, Crime Stoppers or the P3 application um, is really a one-way information. You have to ask it questions per se. They're never going to send you a send you information on the crime you've reported. The only way to do that is through uh, the code that you get. It's very important to write that down. And if you're Reporting multiple crimes, you get multiple codes. So that code disappears after your crime has been solved. That, that code also helps law enforcement. You'll see in a minute, because law enforcement, once they get um, your tip, has to go back into our system and make a resolution to that tip, whether it was um, an arrest, whether it was, I don't want to call it false alarm, but w whatever the disposition was of of your claim or your tip. So like I mentioned, what happens next? The information is sent to the, 
central crime for distribution. So if for some reason um, you're in Ventura County and you witness a crime outside of the county and you want to still report it through Ventura County, we will find the right agency uh, to transfer that, that tip to. What happens a lot in Los Angeles is we have a central um, tip station that comes through um, the LAPD and they have multiple cities and the, the LA sheriffs that they um, delineate the, the tips to. So it's, don't be afraid if you think it's outside of your, your normal residence or you're on vacation or you're, you're just on leisure travel to somewhere and you think you see something. Um, when we get into the latter part of my presentation, you'll hear me talk about see something, say something. And that's a, um, I guess you'll call it the, the slogan for the FBI. Um, I take it a little bit further, not only see something, say something, do something. So everyone out there in TV land or everyone in this room, you know, as I mentioned, you're a second set of eyes. You know, if you see something that just doesn't look normal, I think you have an obligation to, to say something. You might want to discuss it with friends or family first if you don't think it's life-threatening. But I, as I tell my peers through some of my training and some of my clients and even, even my family members, you know, don't, don't be afraid to report something because the worst case is law enforcement comes out and deems it not a threat. But if you don't report something and it becomes a threat, you're going to be upset with yourself over time depending on what that threat was. So again, back to once the information is reviewed by an investigator, a disposition is submitted um, through law enforcement of what, what was the cause. So if you see something that's in the middle of crime in progress, um, obviously don't call Crime Stoppers or the tip line, call 911. So this is not a 911 emergency line. We do get those and we will help you facilitate those. And it's our duty to call dispatch. We don't say call 911 and hang up because we don't know if you're calling 911 or you're the person in harm's way. But I would want to overemphasize that. If you see a crime in progress, your first call is 911 if you're comfortable with that. If you know of a crime that happened or is about to happen or, or you might feel threatened and you want to use the anonymous um, portal, then that's where Crime Stoppers comes in. So from that, the results, of the, the results are all tracked and through our management system that allows you to get paid, but also allows law enforcement to clear their comm stats, which are really important when they're looking at um, different crimes in the areas. So as I mentioned, tipsters can log back in using their code. Remember, you need your code always. Your password will uh, remain the same because it's your password but your code will always be different if there's multiple crimes. www.p3tips.com is the application on the web and on your smart device. If the tips lead to an arrest, the tipster is instructed to visit, in this case, Wells Fargo and Oxnard. So we've partnered with Wells Fargo to do the anonymous payouts. When you go to, to the bank teller, um, and you tell them you have a Crime Stoppers tip, all they're going to ask you for is your code. Again, why you have to have your code. I'm reemphasizing that. Because we do get people that go there who've lost their codes and tried to give their names, and their names mean nothing to us. Because we don't ask your name. When you go through the portal, it's not asking you any personal information other than um, maybe what city um, that you live in. So it's really important if you want the monetary reward is to keep the information. So again, th these are ways of how the anonymous tips work. Um, you could call the hotline, 1-800-222-TIPS. You can submit the tip on, online, and you can submit a tip through the, through the application. Remor rewards must be claimed within a six-month period of time. I'm going to overemphasize that because, some, unfortunately, some of our tipsters get incarcerated themselves, and they come out and they expect to get the tips. Um, in some cases, we've actually had a tipster report themselves, thinking they're going to get the reward when they get, get out of incarceration. Um, 
that's why we limit the, the time period. Since we're, we're a nonprofit and for us to budget um, our finances, it's, it's a six month period of time. I would say 85% of the folks that make a tip, and it might be even a little bit higher, never pick up the reward money because they're not doing it for the reward. That's just an added benefit because we cross multiple generations from you know, uh, young adults, you know, teenagers, all the way up to um, seniors. And some people have different motivations for reporting tips. Um, as I mentioned, some people have reported themselves. You get a lot of family members that are reporting um, their family members. Um, it, might not, it might be a um, uncomfortable Thanksgiving if you're reporting a family member, but um, those, are, those are what we have seen out there. So again, the, the code is very important and the timely of six months is very important. This last slide, which sometimes kind of creeps me out a little bit, but I put this up here because um, this is a flyer that we use in the K through 12 school systems in Ventura County. Um, doesn't necessarily pertain to the senior group where I'm speaking to, but we have programs for every level, and this is what I wanted to show you. Um, in some campuses, there are school resource officers that are actually sworn deputies um, that help patrol the safety and security of some of our schools. We empower them to give out rewards um, up to $50 depending on um, the relationship with either the student or the nature of the crime. Um, but I wanted to show you this because everyone gets a little bit nervous about what you read in the media about guns and drugs and, and bombs and active shooters. If you see something, say something, do something. I've said that a couple of times today because I think it's really important that um, you take this information, you take it to heart. Um, similar to being trained in CPR, you hope you never need it. The one time you need it, hope that someone who's trained is there to, to help save a life. So I'm going to end this part of the presentation with um, our contact information. You know, it's got, um, again, I've overemphasized how to report a crime, how to download the, the app. Um, if you wanna text busted on, on your phone to, to 274-637, um, you can um, get information that way. Um, the Wii tips from the link on the site is actually now changed to P3, it's a new system. So I, I had not updated that, but our mailing address is on the bottom, and you'll see, I think, in another slide, um, my contact information if you want um, some more information about Crime Stoppers in general, Crime Stoppers at Ventura. Um, since we're a nonprofit, we're always looking for volunteers. Um, doesn't have to be security or law enforcement. It could be anything that you can contribute to, to any organization. But at the end of the day, this, this organization helps keep your community safe. Um, so with that, um, that's the end of the PowerPoint. But I did mention that I'm going to talk about the top 10 financial scams targeting seniors. So crimes against the el elderly continue to skyrocket each year as criminals continue to find more ways to carry on both new and old scams. In fact, seniors lose billions of dollars a year to home repair scams, investment scams, our favorite IRS scams, and various other con targeting people. Um, just to digress on the IRS scam, I think it was the last meeting that it was mentioned, and it's probably mentioned at a lot of meetings. Um, I got nine phone calls last month from the IRS um, for the scam. And because I'm in the business, I took the call and I kind of wanted to see how far it would take and each time they hung up after um, a few minutes or a few seconds but they kept calling back that day and I don't know if it's because I initially picked up the phone so some system triggered that a live person was on the other end and then I um, jokingly went on Facebook and said I'm on my way to Walmart to pay the IRS you know a couple hundred dollars and um, so I'm going to get into that in a minute because the IRS will never call you and they'll never threaten you, and they'll never ask for money, especially through Walmart or Western Union or CVS or Best Buy or any of those. So elderly people are targets for criminal for various reasons. And as family members and friends that we all are, it's our job to protect them from potential scams. 
So in order to help protect your loved ones, here's some ways and some things you should know about the common types of scams targeting seniors and helping to avoid those. So the first one, and this is in no particular order, is Medicare health insurance fraud. Um, scammers are targeting seniors for, for numerous ripoffs surrounding the Affordable Care Act and Medicare enrollment. Um, there's solutions, I have solutions and recommendations regarding that. When in doubt, and this usually comes on the phone, when in doubt, just hang up and shut the door on the person who's trying to, to ask you for money if they come to your door. I mean, those are the simplest ways to do that. Counterfeit prescription drugs is another one. Many older people may be looking for cheaper drugs or alternative ways to save money on fixed incomes. But be, the solution is, is be very cautious when ordering medications online and make sure you talk to your loved ones about the dangers of doing this. We, we in um, um, Los Angeles had a campaign last year with uh, pharmaceutical Merck who helped us do some uh, public service announcements about the counterfeit drugs coming out of the country. So yes, there's potentially ways to save money on uh, prescription drugs, but go through an authorized vendor. Don't go out of country, don't go um, online because those drugs are not only counterfeit, but they're making people sick and in some cases um, it's fatal. Funeral and cemetery scams are another one. Funeral and cemetery scams have been around for years. The FBI warns about two main types of targeted towards seniors. Criminals will read obituaries and enter calls or attend funeral services of someone they don't know and take advantage of someone who's grieving. The scammer then will claim the deceased had an outstanding debt with them and then force them to give them money from the settlement that's a fake debt. Uh, a solution for that is do some research before agreeing to anything. Suggest by the funeral home also if you're elderly and you have a loved one or friend or family that has passed away, make sure you check on them and monitor the financials to make sure you don't fall victim to the scam. Part of a, what a lot of these top tens will be is being involved in your friends' and family's lives and understanding um, potentially some of the threats because these aren't all subjected to the elderly. I mean, anybody can be scammed, as, as I said. You know, I've got the phone call, and I've got the email scam, and I've, I've probably got them all. And in fact, I was a victim of, of identity theft, and it really not only upset me because I'm in the business, it kind of hurt my feelings because um, a 25-year-old female, my license went to a bank, and obviously they didn't think she was 50 years old, so they didn't give her any of my money. But by the time they... Um, tracked her down. I had a Walmart, Best Buy, Target card maxed out, and that was within eight hours. So be very cautious about when people want you to sign up and giving out your personal information. Phone scams. We all we all hear the phone scams. The IRS, as I mentioned, the caller ID spoofing. Criminals make the name of your bank pop up on their caller ID so you think it's your bank and sometimes they ask you to verify information and password your bank will never do that when in doubt hang up the phone and call the number on the back of your credit card or your atm number or go to your bank i mean with modern technology and everything else these criminals are getting more sophisticated and in, in trying to take advantage of, of everybody internet fraud you know Internet fraud or Microsoft has put special consumer alerts to warn about the bogus computer security. Engineers are making cold calls to convince people that their computers are at risk. I know um, many of my clients have fallen victim to the piracy or the um, ransomware. Um, when in doubt, hang up or, or don't respond via email. One of the best solutions to the internet frauds, and there's many of them, is Update your password monthly. Uh, in some cases, if you think you're a victim, do it weekly. Um, don't, don't be at your address, your birthday. Don't have it be something common that you know, a bad guy through an algorithm is gonna eventually figure out. Um, but store your password somewhere off, off of your, your smart device or your computer, because if you're gonna change it that often, you probably wanna write it down. Um, and everything has a password. Your, your bank has a password, 
your email has a password. Sometimes your, your, your utility bills have a password. Everyone has a password. So don't have it the same password for each thing because if a criminal finds that out, it's easy to get into all your personal and private financial information. Um, investments in timeshare scams. Buying a timeshare is bad enough of a ripoff, but imagine getting ripped off two or three times by a crook promising the, to help you resell your timeshare. Um, the solution is, and this is the real truth, is anyone promising you more than pennies on the dollar of what you paid is probably too good to be true. So, you know, that, that, the old adjective. Um, a few more of these, homeowner reverse mortgage scams. You know, pick up the phone and call uh, any of your relatives or go visit them and make sure they're not falling prey to what they call those woodchucks. Be no nosy if you're worried about them and, and their money and the dangers of their money. Um, that doesn't mean that reverse mortgages are bad, but what that means is once there's a nice product out there that, to help out anybody, especially the elderly, criminals prey on them. And, you know, from anti aging drugs to, to fraud scams to um, funeral scams. I mean, it's all out there. And, and unfortunately, my studies have shown is um, elderly people are sometimes um, afraid to say no or might be embarrassed to report a crime or might be a victim and not know it. Again, see something, say something, do something. It all ties in back to Crime Stoppers. But if you're a friend or have a family member that you think falls into that category of being scammed, talk to them. You know, I was talking to my, my wife today about this. Um, some of the bank scams can be avoided by having multiple uh, signature authorizations. So depending if a friend or family lives close enough to an elderly relative, they could be scammed, but the check would never go through if it requires two signatures. You know, the online banking transfers and things like that should require um, an updated. You, you see all this if you operate online. You see all of these um, um, password protected algorithms, but people can get into those. So it's important to be mindful and do some forward thinking as to what scams you can avoid. Obviously, if someone comes to your door and wants to sell you something, the easiest thing to do is to shut your door. Um, and you can call the police after that. Um, the last one, and I'm going to talk a little bit of detail about this because um, I've known a few clients and um, friends that have been victim to this. It's, they call it the grandparent scam. And crooks will call seniors, impersonate their adult children or their grandchildren in order to extort money. And so what happens is the phone rings and, and someone picks it up. And the scammer in a low voice says, Grandma, Grandpa. And usually the senior would, might say something like, Is that you, Jimmy? Is that you? And then, of course, now they've got the name of, of, of your uh, grandchild. Or they've gone online if you're on any social media, Facebook or any of the other ones. It's very easy to kind of figure out the family members. Um, the scammers will also tell you that they're as 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 they're impersonating someone in your family, that they're in trouble, they're in jail, and they need money to get out. Um, typically what, what happens here is, or the solution is, and, and I'll tell you a quick story, is, is to have some sort of code word with your relatives, you know, depending on how many relatives you have. Um, could be um, if, if it's your, someone impersonating your grandson, Jimmy, ask Jimmy, how his mother Susie's doing, knowing his mother's name is, is Marilyn, right? So it kind of, if he says, oh, she's doing great, or what, you know it's a scam, right? A lot of times you want to ask for a callback number and to verify. Um, but in, in these cases, you know, whether it's a birth date, whether it's how's your dog spot and they don't have a dog, something that only you and that relative would potentially know um, is important to sort of verify. Um, I have a client who fell victim to this exact thing where his father was called um, on the East Coast and, pretend, and the scammer pretended to be him that he was in trouble in Mexico and he needed $1,500 to get out of jail. And his dad 
didn't didn't know any better and he said uh, can you call me back and he was kind of smart enough to verify try and call his son and verify well he didn't get a hold of his son so he got the call back and said you know we really need this money or he's going to go to jail for a long time so the father who didn't have a lot of uh, resources wired him fifteen hundred dollars and what happened next was once they got you they kept calling back well um the the police down here in mexico need needs another 1500 apparently the crime was more severe and at that time i think the the parent was getting a little bit um um a little bit scared about whether their son was really in jail or this was a scam so he elected not to um call back and not send the money and obviously 20 minutes later this client called his dad saying Dad, you, you've called me three or four times. I've been in a meeting in Orange County with my phone off. So there was no way for the dad to verify. And, and I guess the moral of the story was he had enough information about his wife, his kid, his grandkids, his son. Um, and once they got their hooks in them, they, he didn't stop. So all he could do is either not answer the phone or change his number. So again, the solution is never give out personal information over the phone or send money to un, unknown sources, <coughs> excuse me, unknown sources through wires. So that concludes my presentation as far as crime prevention. As, as I was introduced, you know, my specialty is um, security, crime prevention, and risk mitigation. And that means, that, that's a lot of stuff that means keeping our community safe. So thank you for having me today, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation. I'd like to ask my colleagues up here on the desk if we have any <coughs> questions. Yes, Commissioner Hagee. You, know, you, mentioned, you mentioned reverse mortgages. I was just <laughs> reading in uh, the uh, California Commission on Aging put out some data that there's been a tremendous increase in the amount of uh, foreclosures on on those um, reverse mortgages in April of 2009 to December 2016 74,213 of those reverse mortgages went through foreclosure so uh they're not the safest thing in the world no you're absolutely right and I, I'll go back to if it's too good to be true it probably is um there are some good reverse reverse mortgage um, benefits for through certain service providers, but um, if if it's going to promise you the world, as you see the statistics, it's it, it adds up to billions and billions of dollars of losses for seniors a year. Thank you. Do we have any other questions this side? The other, yes. Thank you, Commissioner Burt. Yes. Hi. Thank you for a great presentation. Um, one of the things that I've become aware of is obviously we all have or most of us have smartphones. We've transitioned from the flip phone and we've got a phone that's smart and we put a lot of information on these and so a suggestion obviously is to make sure your phone is password protected. Also in case you lose the phone that they can't go to your bank account if you have because a lot of times our passwords are saved. So all you have to do is click sign on and you're back right into that particular account. So always make sure your password protected the, your phone in terms of that. One other thing which I've become aware of, um, for brokerage accounts and maybe or, or other financial accounts that you have which may have more significant amounts of money in them. I think it's a very good idea to have a double password protection program in place. And what that means is, is not only can you access that particular organization, that financial place online uh, from your phone or your computer, but then you're asked for an additional uh, set of, uh, you know, passwords. So what they do is you can either have a token, what they call a token. A token is just a little gadget and it you know you hit the button there's a gray button on it and it'll give you six digits which is a rolling code so every time you go on it'll you, you have to put that six digit rolling code in 
Another way is to also have VIP access on your phone. And when you hit, when you're on with that particular organization online, it'll say, please put in your, you know, your access code. So that's a kind of a double set of protections with, and of course it's important with all accounts, but with those accounts that ha may have more significant uh, amounts in them to make sure that you are safe and and so just to pass that on and no thank you, thank you. And, and going back to the f to the phone you could have um, dual ways of signing on nowadays through thumb they're eventually going to do I um, password protected but what I try to do because I travel around the country and I get pinged off of a bunch of different cell towers is at least once a day I turn my phone completely off for a minute or two and that will sort of erase if someone's trying to clone your phone or access your phone. There are people that are sophisticated enough to get in your phone. I mean, we just kind of plug it in and we charge it. Someone could always be in sort of the backyard of your phone, always looking at your information. Close out your applications on your phone, um, but if you have a dual source of, of fingerprint and, and ID, that would help as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Fotheringham? Yes, I have a couple of related questions. You mentioned that uh, some criminals may uh, turn in a tip on themselves and hoping to collect a reward. <laughs> and if the tips are anonymous, how do you know that? Uh, the second question I have is, do you find criminals who uh, will turn in tips hoping to direct police efforts in another direction away from themselves? Um, yes and yes. So the, the first part is, um, because the criminal who got out of jail contacted us directly saying, here's my code. Um, and it was significantly past the six months. It was about four years. Um, <laughs> but they, I guess they still wanted, you know, the $85 it was that, they, that the, it led to their own arrest. The second part is w we do get a fair share of wrong or, or tips that would potentially de deter law enforcement into another direction. What I can tell you is every tip is followed up on. Every tip doesn't lead to an arrest. Um, we, we have in, in Ventura and in, in LA and across the country, we have social media, Facebook um, ads where we're looking for criminals and we tell them how, how to, uh, if you see something, report it. And I would say um, probably 20 to 30 times a week, someone's trying to report a crime through our um, Facebook ad and we, we tell them you've got to call the number and if it's a crime in progress call law enforcement um, just to parlay off of what you said I, I got one the other day that it was so detailed is this guy is selling drugs here's his name here's where he works here's where he lives here's the car he drives and his girlfriend's name and everything well it turned out it was the ex-wife of the first guy right so law enforcement takes a lot of that in consideration um, because there are people that try and skew the system, so to speak. Well, good questions. Thank you. Yes, uh, Vice yeah. Chair Allen. Thank you. Uh, with the new Medicare cards coming out, are there concerns over frauds popping up with that? Um, I haven't heard okay. that, but that yet. Mm -hmm. But um, if there's a way to commit fraud, <laughs> yeah. it, it will, it will okay. come. Okay, yeah, I, um, that's why I asked the question. Yeah, um, <laughs> Yeah. okay. But, but yeah, it, 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 you know, being told that you have a new Medicare card and have to divulge your Social Security number is not accurate. So if someone sends or you... Or verifying your verifi address. Yeah. yeah. If, if you have to verify information where someone send you something, you want to verify who you're talking to. Is a pro it, it could be legitimate, but what, what my notes say under, under the Medicare is being told you need uh, new supplemental policies, mm -hmm. being asked to pay a $100 fee for helping navigate the new Obamacare website. All these things are, are scams and false. And they seem very small at the time, but yeah. the, the criminals are trying to target a large populace. And, you know, if you're hitting 100 people for 100 bucks a day, it adds up. Right. And then two other things, just quick. My friend, a good friend of mine, her supposed grandson called her from Las Vegas and said he was stuck in Las Vegas. And she says, why would Andrew be in Las Vegas? And then anyway, it, she didn't fall for it. And then in defense of reverse mortgages, my niece and her husband, who are older than me, have had an excellent one for 11 years. So 
No. They're not all scams. Yeah, co- correct. And and I'll um, leave with one one more antidote of um, the widow or widower. Um, I've seen these cases a lot to where they're befriended by um, someone younger and they shower them with gifts and show them attention. And ultimately it leads up to being asked for money. Uh, sometimes these are virtual relationships because they can look in – see obituaries and eventually stalk people on social media or call them or happen to bump into them at the grocery store because sometimes there's pictures. Um, This is when in doubt, see something, say something, do something. But if you're in tune with your family and friends, this can't happen. So I overemphasize that these scams will never go away. It's just making sure a lot more people understand that they're out there. Thank you. Let's uh, give Mr. LaPelle another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Number 10 on our agenda is the adjournment. And once again, I want to thank my colleagues here up on the dais for the work that they did this month and the excellent reports that they brought to you, and um, as well as those who helped me facilitate this meeting. Our speaker next month is going to be Patricia Grant, who is the, um, the recipient of the 2017 Senior of the Year Award. And the date of that meeting is June, it's June 6th, it's June 6th. It's the day before the Senior of the Year Award banquet, Wednesday, June 6th. And also at that meeting, we will hear from all of the individuals who have been nominated for Senior of the Year Award. Every year we use our June meeting to celebrate um, volunteerism. And so mark that on your calendar, Wednesday, June 6th at one o'clock and watch us on television or on the internet if you're available. And then just finally, um, the Council on Aging is going to be hosting a series of workshops throughout the month of May. And they're titled Be the Change. And so this is your opportunity to come meet with us, and we are listening. We are listening because it's part of our purview. What we do is listen to the concerns of the seniors in the in, in our in our neighborhood, and then report those concerns to the city council. So we will be having listening sessions. The one on Monday, May seventh, I understand, is full. There is going to be one on Thursday, May tenth. Wednesday, May 23rd, and Thursday, May 24th, from 4 until 5.30 at the Global Adult Community Center. So that information, if you didn't uh, write it down, is in the Global Gazette. So swing by the Global Center. I know you go by there all the time like I do, and pick up a Global Gazette. And then please RSVP for one of these listening sessions because you know what? If you don't say it, we don't know, so you have to come. And you RSVP by calling area code 805 381 7362. 381 7362. And with that, I thank you again for your kind attention, and we will adjourn the meeting. <laughs>